Hi everyone, Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again today. A couple of days ago I did a video on how to combine two audio interfaces so that we can extend the number of inputs and the outputs available into our DAW. If you haven't watched that video, it's very informative. I not only show you how to do it, I also describe the reasons why we do it that way. So click on the link in the middle and they will take you, you can go on and watch that video. And you can always come back to this one. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to use the same principle of combining two audio interfaces and having them both in sync with their sampling rate, but this time using the SPDIF connection. So what is SPDIF? Well, it's uh, developed by Sony and Philips. It's basically a digital communication of audio pulse code modulation that is sent out as a stereo signal using one RCA connection most commonly used. So an audio in the interface would have one RCA SPDIF out and another RCA as SPDIF in. Now SPDIF does also include a clock for its sampling rate. SPDIF most commonly used between a CD player or some music um, instrument to hi-fi system, but uh, at the same time our audio interfaces can be used as hi-fi as well, so we can connect them, and uh, that's the whole purpose of it. But we can utilize the clock to synchronize the two audio interfaces together. In this example, I have two audio devices. One of them is my AudioBox 1818 VSL, and you can actually see it on the screen. And that is being my master clock or master device as well. And the next one that I have is my M Audio Fast Track Ultra, which is a six channel input plus SPDIF. And you can actually see there's SPDIF option available there as well. So, and I have them both connected using RCA connection at the back of the unit. So I have my AudioBox 1818 VSL as the master. It's using internal clock. But you can always uh, just realize that you can always use the other way around as well. Because when we click here, we can see it can use SPDIF clock or ADAT clock. So, um, you know, like in my last example, even though I'm using AudioBox as my master clock, but you can use it the other way around as well. So you can make your AudioBox 1818 VSL as your slave. Or if you have two of them, you can combine and make one master, one slave. And one other option that I have selected here, here is 48 kilohertz. Now SPDIF, the maximum sampling rate you can have is 48 kilohertz. Um, you can also use the 44.1, but might as well go to 48 kilohertz. That's one of the limitations is SPDIF. In my previous example, when I talked about using ADAT, ADAT will give you higher sampling rate. That means when you want to record, and if your audio interface supports, you know, all the way up to 96 kilohertz or even 192 and anywhere in between. So you, and if you want to use higher sampling rate, ADAT would be the only other option. So that's why ADAT is preferred if both devices support ADAT. Just use the light pipe uh, ADAT cable and you, um, you'll have higher sampling rate. But if you don't have it and your audio devices only support SPDIF, then 48 kilohertz is probably the best option. Now in my Fast Track Ultra, if I go into the setup, as you can see, my clock source here, I have the option of having either internal, it's not coming up for some reason, uh, it's either internal or SPDIF, as you can see it here, and the sampling rate of 48 kilohertz. So that's what you need to select, and you're all good. They'll be all in sync. 
Let's close that. And obviously the next thing we need to look at is, um, is our ASIO for all. As you can see, I have my AudioBox 1818 VSL and my M Audio Fast Track Ultra connected. I thought I'll use um, a different example rather than the Firepower FCA 1616 from Behringer, just to change of um, um, different devices to make sure that they all work in, in different um, scenarios. So if I click the plus sign, I have my out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And for inputs, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So those are my eight inputs and eight outputs from 1818 VSL. And for my M Audio Fast Track Ultra, I'm using out one, two, three, four, five, six, not seven and eight, because seven and eight is SPDIF. I don't need that because that's just being used as a clock. And if we go further down, then we have input one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Not used again, that's because my SPDIF input. So in total, I would have 14 inputs. Uh, I have eight from uh, 1818 VSL and six from Fast Track Ultra. And looking at my, let's close that. Looking at my Studio One, I have actually added 14 tracks and had a session of over 30 minutes of recording. And as you can see, I've recorded it and no audio issues whatsoever. Otherwise, we would have actually seen some really odd things um, in there. But if you look, you know, I have been talking and saying things just to make sure that, you know, um, it's, it was working still with no synchronization issues. And let's sort of look at the beginning there as well. There we go, just been talking on the mic. And I've recorded 14 tracks all at the same time. And I still can, you can hear one of the microphones coming up right there as I speak. And looking at our, let's quickly look. So I have 14 inputs, eight and the six. And the outputs, you know, again, 14 outputs that I've used. So it's really, really flexible and still going since few hours that I actually started recording this. Um, and it hasn't had any issues whatsoever. So it's, it's great to actually see. You know, even in, um, in here, I've got sort of my input of the 1818 VSL is actually outputting um, at the headphone output of my M audio. So a microphone connected at input one of my audio box 1818 VSL, it's not going to the output of audio box, but it's actually going out to the headphone of M audio. So, so that basically I can double up uh, my headphones because I've got one headphone available on AudioBox 1818 VSL and I have two headphones on M Audio Fast Ultra thing. Um, that means I can use three headphone outputs at the same time and assign different tracks to different outputs. So how great is that? So uh, it definitely works. So here goes another proof that uh, you can use SPDIF to combine the two audio interfaces together. Of course, um, you need drivers for each one of those audio interfaces. Make sure they are installed and you can click setup and select them. I cannot, I just realized I cannot select them because I've got um, Studio One open. Obviously, it won't allow me to change any of the settings until I close down the uh, DAW. So, um, hope. That was helpful. Now you know for sure that it actually works. I'm just going to disconnect the mic from there, from the audio box, and live while I'm doing this live, and connect it to my M audio, and I should be able to hear the microphone coming up. Yep, I can hear the microphone coming up there as well. So it's still all working without any issues. Well, if this was helpful, now that you can actually get your two audio interfaces, uh, even at low end, affordable 
audio interfaces that have SBDIF, you can expand the number of inputs without any hassles, thanks to ASIO for all device universal device driver. If this was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up. That way I know that it was very useful for you. And of course, as always, if you have any comments, feel free to comment below. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have in this uh, regards to this video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you get kept up to date. Any new ideas and experiments and you know workarounds, I come up with and make videos and upload them to my channel. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching. Cheerio.